Hey everyone, this is Prince Brightstar, and welcome to quite the blast from the past here. Um, so when I first started doing YouTube Let's Plays, uh, after I started doing Minecraft, there was a game that I took a look at called The Stanley Parable, and what do you know, there is a new version of that out today. Uh, at least, I think it's a new version. It might be an upgrade, it might be a DLC, it might be completely new. I'm really not sure. I, I had to pay uh, uh, basically uh, full price for the for the new game. Uh, and so this is uh, this is interesting to see this uh, this game out now here. So uh, I do know at least they were supposedly going to add some new endings in, but I guess we'll just have to see. That plus this never originally released on console. So uh, this will be definitely an interesting thing to uh, go through here. Uh, all right, let's, uh, proceed from here. Uh, confirm. Enter the current time. Why can't you pull that from my computer? Uh... Note, accessibility settings can be accessed from the main menu, okay. Ah, okay, so it just dumps us right into the uh, main menu here. Okay, uh, then in that case, uh, real quick, let me just take a quick look here. Uh, audio... Yeah, I want to make sure I pull some of this down here so we can hear the narrator a bit better. That's for certain. Uh, video. Resolution by resolution, okay. Uh, Alright, I think the rest of this looks fine. All right, so uh, let's just go ahead and uh, get this started and see what we're uh, see what we're up against here in this new version here uh, called the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number four two seven. Employee number four two seven's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions call a meeting, or even say, hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. So this intro is actually very similar to how I remember it back in the original version here. So uh, it's interesting to see this uh, all uh, playing out like this here. Um, but yeah, so this is the Stanley parable. We are we basically play Stanley here, and we basically kind of have to find out what's going on with our coworkers, uh, amongst other things uh, in this game. All coworkers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, I'm going to adjust my mouse real quick here. Uh, mouse sensitivity. Let's see what that does. Yeah, that's better. 
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Now, in this case, we're basically just following the original, uh, the, the original storyline, apparently, here. Yet, there was not a single person here, either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I'll be back for you later. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yeah, of course Stanley wouldn't have known this. He would probably just put, uh, you know, random numbers in. Eight. And Stanley just... just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yeah, okay. 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Yeah, I don't remember the room getting this dark before. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Yeah, this is fun over here, but mind control facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Well, of course, we're walking over there right now. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Yeah, quite a, quite a large number of employees here. Somebody's obviously keeping an eye on things here. Or not, there's nobody in the room right now. Except us. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad, or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. 
And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Indeed, and over here is the button or buttons which control the system's power. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. And that basically is what's known as the freedom ending uh, in this game, which the end is never. Um... Now, I am kind of curious how we actually get access to the new content, because uh, that's basically one of the endings uh, from the original game. Um, All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. It's possible it could be on the other path here. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. This being the employee lounge ah, over here. Yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Now the narrator will go on for a little but bit about that. to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. One thing I am kind of curious about, though, there was a bit of a bug I found back in the original version, I'm wondering so he if it's been patched. through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. I think it was, because that usually, uh, that didn't take that long for that to close. Okay. So, all right. Let me go back into the menu, because the last time, there were some other weird things found inside the menu, and I'm wondering if maybe that's in play here. Uh, controls. No, we're okay there. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's see here. It's 
So one of the things that uh, used to be in the menu in the original game was that you actually had to turn achievements on. So, uh, but I'm not seeing anything like that here. Uh, let's see here. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an arc. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Let's try a different ending just to see if anything has changed. Just because there was another ending that existed in the old version that never really had much of an answer behind it. Stepping in. Yeah. So that right there basically separates us from the narrator. Narrator is basically locked in the in the in the manager's office right now, and we can start to make our way back to Stanley's office now. Here we go, and as you can see, a new door has opened up. Let's go ahead and head inside. And we have in large letters, you are now leaving. And we have to head up several flights of stairs here uh, in order to actually get to this ending here. It's going to take us a minute or so to actually climb all the stairs. Kind of interesting that they would ask if you've played the Stanley Parable before and then not present you immediately with, you know, I don't know, whatever the new content would be. I mean, so far I haven't even seen anything that's really new here, to be honest. But I am, I'm, I'm looking at the title of the, of the program. I did not accidentally load the old game. This is, this is the new version and, and that... That new menu is also a uh, uh, confir uh, confirmation of that. Uh, Rooks, uh, you haven't missed that much. I'm trying to find the new content in the new version of the game here. And that does not appear to have changed either. Okay, so I'm really confused here. I'm... Why am I not finding any of this new content that was apparently in this version here? Um... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stan had decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Right, no maybe matter how maybe hard it's Stanley outside. looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. The way we get outside is through this window here. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? All right, so this is also pretty much the same here. So, I am really confused here. Um... I'm going to go ahead and say yes well, on this. I don't this. know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any old time you want, like right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. 
I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. There once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. All right, so he's like going to basically about? keep singing for a he little bit here. Like uh, I'll let that play out. Uh, but while that's happening, I'm going to try to find out what's actually going on here. Because this is, this is really weird that there's no hint whatsoever about where the new content is. Which is why he is in this parable and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yes. You too will become quite unbearable. Okay, I think I get what's going on here. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, so... Uh, let's go ahead and begin the game again, and I need to pay a little bit more attention here to what might have changed in the office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Yeah, so, so far, we're not so he detoured seeing the anything section, here. It might actually be a little bit random uh, for the chance for track. this to even happen, potentially. Because uh, I remember in certain uh, in, in, in certain experiences uh, with this game, uh, it was possible to uh, encounter Yet different hallways as you were beginning and things like that. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. How about we try downstairs this time? This is this is always a fun ending, uh, if you haven't seen it before. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. It None would be it weird. any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh. What a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? 
And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Yeah, isn't now, that a funny situation? Huh? Itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Poor Stanley. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Yeah, having a career can kind of make it so that you don't have time to really worry about a random person in the road. But yeah, I believe that one was called the Insanity Ending. Uh, it's uh, definitely a fun one uh, for how that one plays out. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hello? I think we just found the new content! <laughs> oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? Looks like we're going for a ride! Hello, and thank you 
you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. Indeed, the game the we're Stanley playing right Parable now. Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I feel like I'm on a ride at Disney World. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Oh, I just have to get through a loading screen or something. Well, then again, the game has its own loading screen with um, the end is, is never, so... What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. <laughs> what, is he trying to take over my job here? Ah. <laughs> uh, um... All right. All right, let's see. It's the jump circle. Jump circle. He can't jump in the original. Hey, so he can jump now, apparently. Uh, okay. And it's just counting down. Yay, fun! Actually, I'm sure this goes to go uh, goes with one of the tropes that they're trying to play off here. The the original game was known for messing with uh, tropes, and even the demo that was put out for the game messed with uh, video game tropes a lot. So I'm sure that's uh, that at least a piece of what they're going for here. Is is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness, another elevator, Stanley. I have to say. Initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. I suppose this could also be a commentary on how uh, DLC and uh, uh, remakes are uh, are handled. Well, this is interesting. I don't remember the office ever going from carpet to a bridge like this before. Oh, thank you for That's enjoying it. the new content. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend?
Yeah, uh, Brooks, it's kind of interesting timing with uh, with Elon, uh, Elon Musk in the process of trying to purchase it. Um, uh, that And that he might want to change the name, I guess we'll see. Uh, this appears to be a new office layout. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is definitely interesting. At the very least, uh, I mean, okay, we can see that there's new content right here, but at the same time, if that really was it, uh, the best I would be able to say is, well, at least console gamers can finally get to experience this game. But, uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Actually, can I close the door? Wouldn't that be funny if I could just do that? Uh, nope. Stanley, come over here, in the vent. I want to show you something. Uh, what does this look like first before we go there? Oh, that just takes us back to the office. Okay. Coffee nut. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past, and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special, and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. Strange, I thought you were the developer of the game. Oh well. Now this is an... Interesting location. I call it the Memory Zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. Interesting. You know, I wonder if this is supposed to be an allegory for players that actually took on the achievement where uh, you couldn't play the game for five years, which I actually did complete. Interesting layout of the area overall here, though. Although I'm sure, just looking at some of this here, there's not much land underneath those hills there. Huh. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. <laughs> okay, that that's a that's a funny one putting the Stanley Parable right there on on tape. What do you know? They actually did make a callback to the uh, to the demo that they released, which uh, was actually completely different and yet very much the same as the uh, as the full game. Ah, there's the there's that achievement. Uh, this achievement actually was achievable. You just had to use a special command in Steam to do it.
This seems fake. <laughs> I really don't think that's right. All right, what else you got for us, narrator here? Oh, actually, we... Oh, that's a shame. We can't sit on the bench. Little Stanley? And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Nice reflection on the water there. Or rather, uh, the see-through on the water. Alright, uh... What's down here? Guess we can't get in there. I believe that's Stanley there. Poor narrator, he's... It seems overboard for somebody to... just try to remember something about... about a game. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. I don't think Source was ever boxed up like this. So I think you could just download Source from Steam. These were simpler times, Stanley, but I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Ah, now we can get in here. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. 
What's this? What's down here? Oh, this doesn't look good. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Yeah, we'll see where this goes. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. Either that or these are Davy's memories. <laughs> but no, seriously, let's continue on here. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. I suppose even I have noticed that at times. That he just goes on and on. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it. I have to wonder if, if there would be a chance it, to go back say it was perhaps and uh, go through this section again. But anyway... <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this.
Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30... Okay, now it's disabled. Minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only... Oh, Stanley, there it goes. Stanley, St Stanley, please don't push the button again. It's been 12 hours. You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really... Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I, I think it's been a week. Or well, two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me and there's no door out of here. You saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly... Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days. Months. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. All right, one more. And that's it. <laughs> the narrator gave up. <laughs> I'm curious, is there anything behind here? Uh, no, there is not. <laughs> oh yeah, I think you're right on that one, Rooks. That's uh in fact the uh <laughs> looks like the fire alarm battery is uh beeping. Oh, and also the clock fell. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant oh, to hello again. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. Oh, it yeah, the plant enough. died, too. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs-down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then, he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us. Now he went, shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to all examine right, I don't with think you realize we are here yet. The end is never 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 the end is
we got some uh, plant life in here now. And they're gone. Yeah, is this also supposed to be an allegory for... What was it? That that movie called uh, Click, I think? Um, I can't remember who was starring in it, but it, it was basically a movie about somebody that was fast-forwarding through their life uh, after wandering into... Uh, into the Beyond section of Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, and the button has fallen over. Okay, so I did remember the name. Uh, okay, so this is no longer functioning, it looks like. So I guess, uh, yeah, let's, let's check out this exit here. Oh, and we've gone so, for, so far forward in time that basically the sun has burned away most of the environment and most of the world has turned to sand. Oh. <laughs> okay, so then I guess that was an ending. So I guess we'll call that the, uh, the, uh, the desert ending. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So how easily can we get into this? Okay, yeah. So... That's nice. So <laughs> they put up a neon sign. So I guess uh, hopefully this is open uh, oh, good. going forward. You notice my sign? Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. I mean, this this kind of does put the nail on the head here, doesn't it? Huh. Is there a chance for this thing to go over there instead? You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever, The Stanley Parable 2. Ha! Huh. Okay. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. I guess to a degree, after so much time, fans would expect a sequel more than a... Uh than just a remake and a console release. Uh, good use of 427 there, all things considered. Makes me wonder if this was planned now. Um, but just out of curiosity, 
because I'm wondering if they actually took it this far. And no, they did not create a binding for a skip button. Uh, not sure if I get the idea of the reference to Elon. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Sure, who uses target files these days? <laughs> okay, that so that's that right there is actually a reference to Crows, 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 uh, who was the uh, the developer uh, studio uh, behind the game. Oh, sequel ideas. Uh, Stanley can throw axes. Stanley gets boons. Uh, from that's getting a little tiny there. Uh, artistic intimate wife scene. Free roam mode. More famous narrator got scratched out. Dress up mode. Uh, proper gameplay. Nude Stanley. Oh boy. Uh, New York City. Jetpack. Fuel canisters. New content is out. New content part two is in. Old and busted. New hotness. Boring sections of the chart. Cool red section of the chart. <laughs> uh, ain't that the truth when it comes to the business world. You're back two doors. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, maybe? I, I guess we'll have to see. Uh, more TSP, better TSP, paradigm, paradigm shift synergy, brick and mortar approach. What is... And that platform doesn't look right. Usually it's, uh, one at the top, two at the right, and one, uh, one, uh, or three at the, on the left. Um, ah, this fern. I remember I was supposed to remember this fern because it would become important later in the story. At the confusion ending. You know, a screen like this, you would expect this to maybe be one of those uh, touch panels. 
Although, actually, I can see it's just coming off the laptop here. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Uh, I'm sure I can. Uh, there, that is one of the endings that you could get in the original, so I guess we'll have to... We'll have to see what new features come in along with maybe looking back at that a little bit. Um... I'm just trying to look through all the set dressing to make sure I don't miss anything here. The prequel to The Stanley Parable 2 is the sequel to The Stanley Parable. Okay, okay. I feel like I'm going to, like, one of those convention centers here. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Okay. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? I wonder where it's going to pull this from. Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here. Let's have you roleplay as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim, falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim, seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim, and as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? If so, then please step forward and press the button. So you're telling Stanley to become Jim. Okay. Jim. <laughs> yes, you see. What a thrill. What a rush. That was you. The button described you. Do it again. Do it again. Where's the 8 button? Jim. Ooh, it hits even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. Oh, and for reference, I can't jump anymore. So I guess that was only something a thing in the uh, in the jump circle. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable too. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. Ah, I believe this signage just got updated. What's in here? 
An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it would go at the end of the... Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. <laughs> yeah, that's a... That's a <laughs> Some of those endings don't really end. <laughs> or you don't get to the end of them. Ever. Alright, let's try this free, new, and easy achievement. So pull the lever, receive your new achievement, no more steps, it just works. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Okay, I, 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 I wasn't aware that that's what it was a reference to. Thank you. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. Give me that achievement! Is he going to try to stop me? Apparently not. Now, isn't this a blast from the past? I believe this is uh, what the original uh, Half-Life 2 mod looked like for the Stanley Parable. And no, uh, it, it doesn't keep doing it if I just hold the button down. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Well, we've seen the jump circle. Although... You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. You'd think a guy like that could reset the number of jumps. Also, that board is glitching out. Uh, what collectible? Oh, over here, gotcha. Ah, this will be useful. Uh, jump circle this map. This is an interesting key for this map. Can you find them? Ah, 
Collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. Now, this is interesting artwork here. And of course, what was there at the end is, uh, gone now. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game, and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. I'll keep the exit in mind for later. What is this? Please, no screenshots. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy Twelfth Birthday. Which would you go with? Maybe Get Well Soon? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm locked in here. Ah, over here. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy 12th birthday, step niece, it is. <laughs> okay. And I did try to take a screenshot. Uh, nothing comes up on screen, so. Or actually, Merch. Maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Stanley Parable 2 reassurance bucket. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold on to the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? 
All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable 2. I can't tell if RTX just got turned on or not. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. I'm stuck carrying this thing. I can't drop it, apparently. Um... Through that one for four hours is interesting. Huh. That buzzing sound is... I haven't heard something like that in a really long time. Like... I'm trying to remember when the last time I heard it was... But that's, a, to me, that's a very familiar sound. Um, maybe some kind of glitching, yeah. Oh, it's coming from this screen, it looks like. Oh, I guess that did turn RTX on, Ray Trace. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, I missed something over here, or rather, I got pulled away from it for, uh, for a collectible. Alright, that should not have sounded. My apologies, everyone. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. For just a brief moment, I could have sworn the ceiling was lowering. Alright. Well, let's see where this hole takes us. You see? Isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing there, Lord Samuel. Hmm. Um, now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Why? Is this a, a non-functioning feature as well? Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. <laughs> is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite uh -oh. is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the whole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. 
Every pause button is a Roman numeral two. <laughs> uh, so somebody that was setting this place up was tossing all their cigarette butts down here. Meeting at 2 p.m. Haha. <laughs> Alright, I'm not going to sing that because potentially that could set off uh, content ID. But I think we all know what that is. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Oh, for heaven. You see, I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. Not normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole. I had it to see. Until the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Give it a few seconds. Okay, he's not talking anymore. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to show you and to talk about. And I've had enough of the hole for a long Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing where... Wow. Okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Yeah, I have to wonder if any of these dropped items in here would have also made it even shorter. Like, maybe the original version of the fall was going to be like an hour, and whoever threw these down here just broke the dang thing. Well, there it is. The shame of my lie has come to haunt me. Not only is the hole not infinite, but it's barely even a hole at this point. It's more of a concavity, or even a very aggressive divot. How is this still appealing to you? I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Hmm. Is the, um, teleport button not working? It's not. You sure? Well, I mean... I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Nope. Still nothing. Well, I suppose I. I, suppose I need some steps out of here. Do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole. I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the whole have a wonderful rest of eternity together. Oh dear. Was that an ending? Hello. No jump. Not that I would want to now.
This kind of reminds me of Haunted Mansion back in uh, Disney World, actually. Change perspective. Change your perception. <laughs> Another one rides the bus? <laughs> Change your reality, okay? Seems you had sort of dozed off there, drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. Okay. Oh. We're back here, here again. We are. Go on, try out some of the new features. So, was that an alternate ending to the new content? <laughs> so. That makes me wonder if all the new content is just in here. Yeah, no kidding. That, that, that was definitely a hilarious uh, ending there. And we can't get back in to experience the hole again. Oh, well. All right, was there anything else? Settings World Champion. Okay, apparently there's something new over here. 
Oh, wait, that's the epilogue. Okay. Then, is there anything else that... That's where I remember that sound from. Uh, it was something I would often hear on, um... Uh, on telephone calls. Alright, um... So, we've seen where they moved the jump circle to. We, we, of course, know where this map is. Free achievement. The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. So, that didn't get updated. Merch, we've seen. Settings World Champion, we can't get into. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. Uh, we've got that in our hand. Office decorations... That would be the balloons, epilogue, collections, infinite hole. Okay, so I think we've seen everything. So it's time to uh, head for the exit then. All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> Okay. Are you ready? Let's Here see what you got, narrator. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Uh. Um, that's. Well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of. Okay, never mind. Hold on. Let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. <sighs> okay. Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? Mm, I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. And there it is. Fancy! I'm curious how long this hallway goes for. Alright, uh, settings? Ooh, okay, so it continues to play. What if I try to bring up the credits? Yeah, so even those, even these just play on the, uh, on the new background here. Kind of see how the uh, how the elements are uh, warping around and everything here. All right. Well, I guess. Uh, oh, 
Here's the end of the hallway. And I guess that then loops it back to the to the start of the animation. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's begin the Stanley Parable 2, as it's being called here. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee. Okay, there are those balloons. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. Now that click to skip had always been there, even in the original version. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Yeah, so it looks like we're just back to the, uh, to the regular game now here. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Bucket. Stanley picked up the bucket. Uh, no jumping. Also, this rope wasn't here, I think. Alright, uh, so there's only one thing I can think of to do with a bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Bucket belongs in broom closet. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet, it wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy, it's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must okay, be. Okay, so did they change Given all of his lines for every single ending on your if you got right the bucket? Now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name-calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. 
Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. He thinks I've been holding Any on to this for it. way too long. Okay, so he finally shut up here. Uh, but in a moment, I think he's going to start talking. Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. There. Now it's settled. No more debate. <laughs> no more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. All right, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slab it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see? I feel <laughs> that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, oh, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's not what? just... I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. Okay, is that the is that the last line? Okay, I think that was the last line. So, if I'm right though, if I step outside, no. Okay, so things actually have changed here then, because uh, I would have expected him to start talking again, but I guess that's just not the case here. All right. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion what and chaos. What was that code again? It would be with him, always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two, but Stanley guessed the correct code there we sheer go. luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Hello, collectible. You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So... I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. All right, down we go. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. How much has this changed, I wonder? The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves.
the monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter, his one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. I think if anything, it seems like but the no narrator is just trying to insert a, a new character the into the story in the, in the form of the bucket. labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking Eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded Thank from his Thank you for very the place. subscription there, Wolfric. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. <laughs> but it's just the bucket. <laughs> when at last they came to the source of the room's power, Stanley and... Let's see how this changes. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd live together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and to... What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Now that's a new ending. <laughs> okay. So I guess in that case, uh... Ah. Uh, <laughs> bucket is love, bucket is life. I don't know. Um... Figuring finders committee at uh, committee meeting today in the meeting room. Now, 
I think there's one ending that I won't be able to uh, get an alternate ending for, and it's it's uh, this one right here. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Yep, nothing new with that one here. Ah, but we do have this new ending that's popped up here. Uh, which I All believe is co-workers were gone. In what here. Could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Welcome to the whiteboard ending. Ah, such a classic ending. Yeah, no bucket in here. Dog mode. Yeah, I think that changes uh, the narrator's uh, text if I or voice if I remember correctly. Um, all right, so we've seen the we've seen the uh, I guess that new uh, new content area. We've seen that the bucket has the potential to change the endings here. Of course, a couple of endings we are seeing here, of course, don't change, and that makes sense. Um, but yeah, at this point, what I want to do is I want to take a quick three to five minute break, and then we're going to keep going through uh, some more of these bucket endings and see what happens. So stick around, everyone. I will be right back. 